Hello everyone, and if I don't uh, see you tomorrow, uh, Happy New Year everyone. Uh, as you all know, Vishwanathan Anand won the 2017 World Rapid Championship, and uh, Ju Wenjun here won the 2017 World Rapid Championship for women. Uh, I chose this game, uh, Wenjun is playing against uh, Ting Ji Lai. Ting Ji Lai won second place here, and it's, uh, it's really a great game between the two of them. And the other reason I chose this game is because it features a very cool opening, the Four Knights game. Uh, and I also decided to share uh, one story about that opening, but we'll get to that. Uh, Ju Wenjun is the third highest rated woman in the world after Ho Yifan and Anna Muzichuk. It's really a shame uh, Anna Muzichuk didn't play in this championship, uh, since Ju Wenjun also, like Anna Muzichuk last year, won this championship, the Rapids, uh, without losing a single game. I think it's uh, 8 wins and 7 draws, or it could be 7 wins and 8 draws, not, not really sure. So def definitely a deserving title. And she's playing against uh, Ting Ji Lai, uh, who is the current 2017 uh, Women's uh, China Champion. So, so let's see this game. Uh, Ting Ji Lai has the white pieces and she plays e4. Uh, we have e5 and knight to f3. We have knight to f6, knight to c3 and knight to c6. The four knights game. And uh, this is uh, why I also cho chose this game. Uh, it is ex exactly in this opening that uh, Mikhail Tal in 1954 in Riga uh, won his first game against the Grandmaster. That Grandmaster is Yuri Averbach, and I don't think I've uh, shown any games by Yuri Averbach other than that game he played uh, against Misha Osipov, where he kind of let him win. Uh, but it's interesting that every time I speak of Yuri Averbach, uh, he's playing uh, <laughs> against some Misha out there. Uh, and in this position, Tal played d4, Averbach played e captures on d4, and we have knight to d5. Uh, this is the so-called Belgrade Gambit. And they say it took Yuri Averbach here uh, like an hour to figure out his next move. Uh, after that hour, he played knight to b4. And uh, for this is like move 5. For the next 5 moves, uh, Averbach also took another hour. And in the end, Yuri Averbach lost this game on time. So this is... Uh, this is part of the game, how Mikhail Tal uh, won his first game against uh, a Grandmaster. But getting back to this game, after knight to c6, uh, Ting Ji Lai goes for bishop to b5. This is the so-called Spanish variation, and Wenjun uh, replies with bishop to b4. This is the double Spanish variation. We have castles, castles, and d3. Uh, d6 now, uh, bishop to g5, and now knight to e7. Uh, Wenjun invites Lai to capture on f6. Uh, but if you capture after g captures on f6, you don't really have anything with white here. You just give up your bishop pair. Uh, this knight will come to g6. f5 will be an idea. This knight will be able to pressure h4 and f4 in the future. So not a lot of uh, not a lot of uh, progress made here for white. <clears throat> so instead, uh, knight to e2 was played. We have c6, uh, bishop to a4, and knight to g6 now c3, bishop to a5, and knight to g3, and h6. Now white has to decide what to do with this bishop. Uh, bishop to e3, we have d5, uh, e captures on d5, knight captures on d5, and bishop to d2. We have bishop to b6, now getting the bishop to a more useful square, from here he's eyeing the f2 pawn, and here uh, Ting Ji Lai played d4, and this d4 was... was uh, not, not really a blunder, but uh, a, a big inaccuracy. Uh, better here was something like bishop to c2 or rook to e1, uh, but d4 simply doesn't work, and uh, Wenjun takes advantage of this uh, by playing bishop to g4. Now, we don't really have a, a way of resolving, uh, resolving this tension in the center. Uh, if you capture, then after knight captures uh, on e5, you don't really have a way to add more uh, protectors of the knight on f3. The knight is also pinned, it can't move. Uh, Black can always capture, mess up white's pawn structure, rookie 8 is coming, you don't really have a lot of options here for white. Uh, so after this bishop to g4, uh, uh, Lai played h3, uh, but now comes the bishop captures on f3, giving up the bishop pair, but <clears throat> this comes uh, with winning a pawn, so, so it's not bad. Queen captures on f3 and e captures on d4, so uh, black just won a pawn. Uh, if you recapture, the bishop can always recapture, so the, the, you don't really gain the pawn back and c4. Uh, we have knight to e7, rook f to e1, and bishop to c7 now. Uh, and b4, expanding on the queen side. Knight to e5, this comes with a tempo on the queen. Queen b3, uh, the queen doesn't really have a lot of useful, useful squares here. Uh, 
rook to b8, preparing b5, and we have f4, now attacking the knight on e5. But the engine simply pushes b5. And now you don't really have a good move here, other than capturing this knight, since your bishop on a4 is attacked. Uh, so f captures on e5, we have b captures on a4, and uh, queen to d3. Queen to d3 uh, is with the idea of blocking the d4 pawn. If you capture the a4 pawn instead, uh, then either knight to g6 uh, grabbing the e5 pawn or the immediate the d3 is also uh, fine for black and it's, it's an excellent position. Uh, so after this, uh, b captures on a4, queen to d3 now blocking the pawn and we have knight to g6 now threatening to win the e5 pawn. Uh, we have e6 with the idea of uh, if black captures, white can recapture. Uh, but queen to d6 now, and this comes uh, with a double attack on the knight on g3, it's only defended once by the queen, and here you don't really have a lot of go good options. Knight to f1 was played, and this is the best move. Uh, if you play something like e captures on f7, yes, this does come with tempo, but after rook captures, uh, now knight to f1 isn't really a good idea. Uh, I mean, it's... Uh, you don't really have a move here anymore for white. If you play knight to f1 to defend h2, because queen, ca queen to h2 is coming, uh, simply rook b to f8. Now the threat is rook captures knight, followed by queen to h2, and this will be checkmate, uh, because the rook on f8 is also now guarding the f-file. So after g3, preventing queen from jumping to h2, simply knight to e5 with a tempo on the queen, uh, queen has to move, and now knight f3 check uh, will pick up the exchange, uh, white is getting crushed here. So after this queen to d6, you don't really have the option of grabbing the pawn, a knight to f1 was played, and now comes knight to e5. Again, you don't really uh, have the luxury of capturing this, uh, you simply have to allow this pawn to be captured. If you play something like, uh, let's say, queen to g3, uh, getting the queen out of the way, uh, simply knight captures on c4, and you can exchange queens, but... Uh, uh, this is this is a winning position for black, but it might have been more resilient than what uh, Tingy Lai decided to play. Uh, at least here you can hope for black to make some inaccuracy or two in the future, and uh, maybe pile up on that. Uh, but after knight e5, uh, we have e captures on f7. Again, this isn't the best choice. Rook captures, uh, and we have queen to e2, getting the queen out of the way. Queen to g6 now. Uh, and we have uh, king to h1. The threat, of course, is knight to f3, forking the king and the rook, so king has to move. Uh, and here we have knight to d3, attacking the rook. And you can't really move the rook. If you play something like rook to b1 to get it out of any attacks, uh, then knight comes to f2 with check, king g1 only move, knight captures on h3, the g pawn is pinned, uh, king h1 and now rook to f2. There is no defense against queen captures on g2. White would probably have to give up the queen or play some uh, some other losing move. Uh, so after knight to d3, g4 was played. Simply knight captures on e1. Why not? Uh, bishop captures. Uh, and d3 now with a tempo on the queen. Queen has to move. And now comes queen to f6. And in this position, uh, Chinese grandmaster Ting Jilai resigned the game. Uh, there are too many threats in this position. Uh, Ju Wenjun is uh, threatening to capture the knight. There is a double attack on the knight. Also, there is an attack on the rook on a1. If you you can't defend both threats, uh, you can't move the bishop, for example, to protect the knight again with the rook because the rook is hanging. So you'd have to play something like rook to d1, get it out of the way, but simply queen captures on f1 wins brilliantly. Uh, queen captures, rook captures, and after king moves, simply rook b to f8, and uh, white white is without a move. You can't even capture the d3 pawn because your bishop is hanging here on e1. So after this very nice queen to f6 move, uh, Ting Ji Lai resigned the game, and uh, this is a game from round 4, so uh, very early in the tournament, but uh, already decided uh, probably the winner of this event, since uh, Wenjun in the end uh, got first place in the rapid section, and uh, Ting Ji Lai got second place. And there was only a half a point difference, so so very intense. So yeah, uh, like I said, it's very unfortunate that Anna Muzichuk uh, decided not to play in this championship. Not uh, why she didn't decide. I mean, it's just a shame that such a great player doesn't play in the world championship. Since An Anna Muzichuk also won uh, last year's rapid section uh, without losing a single game, so it would definitely be uh, a more intense tournament. But maybe she will... Uh, join uh, Ho Yifan uh, and follow in the steps of Judith Polgar and not not play in the women's section altogether. 
but uh, we'll see we'll see there's a whole new year of chess tournaments in front of us so that's the game i do hope you enjoyed it uh, i would like to thank uh, matthew hayne uh, john battaglia miki grammatikov uh, Schneor Kortitz and uh, Stefan Neurer for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. And uh, especially thank you, Miki Gramatikov. Uh, you are uh, the, the, <laughs> the person who contributed on the first day that I actually allowed contributions to my channel. So thank you a lot. I'm very glad to see that after all these months, uh, you're still enjoying my content. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Like I said, if I don't see you, uh, Happy New Year, everyone. And I hope you have, uh, hope you have a great time and a great year. Uh, as usual, you can check all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon. Uh, probably with uh, a game from the women's section of the World Blitz Championship. See you soon.